scene have been lost. Can you direct me to pier number five? <laughs> Yo no entiendo, hombre. Oh, uh, me and Marino, eh, pier, uh, numero cinco, eh, donde? Ah, numero cinco. Si, sí, mire, usted coge por aquí. Me coge usted dos cuadras. Doble usted a la izquierda, entonces usted coge cuatro cuadras. Va usted a la derecha, otro recto, una cuadra más. Y otra más, dos cuadras ya. ¿Comprende? Oh, you understand me like I understand you. Gracias, señor. <laughs> Did I wake you? Kind of helped. How do you feel? Little like death warmed over. Shh. Lie still. I'll put another compress on your head. There. Feel better? Mm-hmm. No questions, Captain? Where you are? How you got here? I guess you'll tell me when you're good and ready. You're a cool one. Well, so far, I don't see much to get excited about. I could take that as an insult. Don't have to hit a man over the head just to get him to pay you compliments, senorita. <laughs> That's a little better. Still hurt? I'll probably live. You'll live. But you don't say how long. You're young, in very good physical condition. If you don't do anything foolish, you should live many, many years. And kind of walking out through that door would be sort of foolish, huh? Foolish and unhealthy. That's what I thought. <laughs> you are a cool one. Tell me, Captain, what brings you to Havana all the way from the South Pacific? Well, I'll tell you. There we were off Tahiti and we ran into this hurricane. Worst storm I've ever seen. The winds were so strong you couldn't stand on deck. The sea was so high we speared a shark on the topmast. Went on for days on end. When it finally blew itself out, there we were. You mean to tell me that a hurricane blew you all the way to this... <sighs> <laughs> You have a sense of humor, too. That's good. What do you want? Oh. The Yankee's up. Carlos wants to speak to him. Just as I was getting comfortable, too. Captain. Uh -huh. A word before we go. I don't know if you realize just how dangerous a situation you're in. That's the second time you warned me. Why? Uh... Let's just say, a good man is hard to find. And when one finds him, one doesn't like to lose him so soon. Carlos is waiting for us in the library. Who is there? Ah, Captain Green. Come in. Sit down, Lita. You're feeling better? Slight headache. You're very lucky. It could have been worse. Excuse me. Permit me to introduce myself. Carlos Gatti. You have perhaps heard of me. No, I'm sorry. I haven't. I forgot that you are not from this part of the world. If you were, you would know at once that I was uh, prominent in the bullring. That explains the get-up. Perhaps to one ignorant of our customs, this jacket appears childish. However, I admit a certain pride in wearing it. I wore this on the greatest day of my life. The day the King of Spain awarded me both ears of the bull I had slain. 
A great honor indeed for a matador, believe me. And if he'd have killed you, would he have given him your ears? The bull never wins, senor. If the bull hasn't a chance, it doesn't rate the killer very high in my book. But then I guess you didn't bring me here to make an aficionado out of me. True. You are here because you are in serious trouble. Oh, it seems funny. I thought it'd be the other way around. But I'll let you explain it. A man was murdered last night, Captain. In the alley behind this very house. Yeah, I saw it happen. Saw it happen? Well, since you did it, I suppose you must also have seen it. But that is just a technicality. As a mere technicality, I didn't do it. But then I guess you knew that. What I do or do not know is beside the point. However, what the police know is important, and for you, vital. And they think I did it? I'm afraid so, Captain. Your wallet was found near the body. It must have fallen out of your pocket in the struggle. Not a very original frame, Gary. No, but defective. All right, so you got me framed. But you haven't got me hanged yet. What is it you want from me? <laughs> Isn't he delightful, Lita? Just like a Toro Bravo, he charges right at the Cape. I'm running a schooner, not a bull ring. I need a ship for a few days. I'm not for hire, Gaddy. Before you turn me down, I only need you for one voyage at a good price. One way trip, huh? To the coast of Florida. What's a cargo? A very small one. You need not concern yourself with it. Contraband, huh? Captain Greve. The dead man asked too many questions. And he's dead. Also, he tried to take something that wasn't his, eh? A very unreliable man all around. <laughs> what makes you think I'm any different? You have a reputation. And I don't think you have any choice. Either you work for me or the police will solve the murder in record time. I'd rather take my chances with the police than with an employer who fires his help with a knife in the back. No use, Carlos. You can't force this one. I will handle this. Don't be so stubborn. He's too smart for you. Tomás! I do not think you realize your position, senor. You are going to replace my late captain, either on the deck of your ship or uh, lying dead in the alley. Still insist, gentlemen, that you haven't seen Captain Grieve since you left the boat yard this morning? I we insist. We spent all day looking for him until you had us arrested and brought here. Arrested? You are not under arrest. With your help, Mr. Snow, and of the bosun, we shall find him and solve the murder. David Grieve's no murderer. If he's missing, it's because something's happened to him, not because he's running from the police. Your loyalty as his first mate is most admirable, Mr. Snow. Still, the fact remains. This wallet is uh, Captain Reeves, isn't it? Aye, it is his. And it was found beside the unfortunate victim. Could you have gotten there by itself? Look, Lieutenant, you could produce a dozen witnesses all swearing they saw David Reeves stab a man in the back, and I'd still say it's a lie, not from stubborn loyalty, but because I know the man as well as one man can know another. And I'm telling you, murder isn't in him. You can't find him, and uh, so far we haven't found him. Uh, how do you explain his absence, if he's not in hiding? He's not hiding. Something's happened to him. And if you don't get off your duff and do less talking and more looking, I'm going to personally tear this town apart myself. That wouldn't be wise, amigo. Havana is a lovely city, quite friendly to visitors. But it moves its own way. I suggest you go back to the boatyard and uh, supervise the repairs to your ship. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. It has already been sent to. Sargento! Two of these officers will see you back to your ship, gentlemen. If you think a couple of tin soldiers are going to keep me aboard, you're wrong, mate. You would prefer to remain in our jail, perhaps? 
Billy, that bully. Come on, we'll be doing the skipper no service by starting a brawl. This is my father called me smoking in the wood pile. You would have felt a lot more foolish if you had succeeded in getting out that window. Eduardo? Senorita? It's all right, Eduardo. I just wanted to see if you were still there. You see? But there is a way. Sure. By carrying Getty's cargo for him. No. By taking me. Can I start laughing? It's no joke, Captain. I want to get out of this house almost as badly as you do. Ever tried walking out the front door? You don't understand, do you? I want to leave Carlos. I want to get out of Havana. I want you to take me. I've already turned Carlos down. I'm offering you a chance to save your life with no strings attached. Because you like the color of my eyes or something? No. Because you have a ship. And I want to get out of this trap that I'm in. Pretty comfortable sort of trap, I'd say. Real cozy for a certain kind of animal. You remind me of the kind of life I've been leading. Of the kind of person I've become. I make no excuses. I know. You had a sick mother. You had a younger brother you had to put through school. I was stranded in Havana when the show I was with folded. But you've heard that story before, too. Once in Shanghai, twice in Brisbane, and once in Pago Pago. Then I needn't bore you with the details. I had my choice of several unpleasant offers. I... I chose Carlos. And you chose the worst of the bunch. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Haven't you ever wanted to change? Do you believe people can change just like that? They can try. With the right kind of person to help them. Hmm. You don't believe me. I never argue with a lady. Especially when she's got a gun at the back of my head. Here. Take it. Go on, you may need it. You have the gun. The door is open. Hall leads to a small staircase. What are you waiting for? Tomas may be here at any minute. Are you ready? You won't be sorry. I swear it. Who's the one that's wasting time? Lieutenant, will you join me? No, thank you, Mr. Gatti. I, I regret that my visit to this house will not allow for any pleasure. I am sorry too, Lieutenant. I can assure you the wine is excellent and good for the digestion. Does it help you digest uh, murder? The wine soothes my stomach, Lieutenant. You already know how easily I get upset. The man who was found dead in the alley behind the house, did that upset it? 
I already told you I did not know the man. And the others in the house, did they see or hear anything? Not to my knowledge, Lieutenant. Lita's out, but you can speak with her later. I have asked Tomas to join us. You can ask him whatever you wish to know. I do not know why the police always insist upon coming here to question me. Every time a simple crime is committed in Havana. Murder is not a simple crime, Mr. Gatti. I have killed only bulls, senor. Havana is not a bull ring, and I assure you we are not going to let you turn it into one. You sent for me, senor Gatti? Ah, Tomas. This is Lieutenant Quinsala again. Please tell him whatever he wishes to know. Don't trouble yourself, Tomas. I've heard you lie before, and uh, I know you are not a very good liar. Is that all, Lieutenant? For the moment, Mr. Gatti. We are always at your service, Lieutenant. We are always at your service, Lieutenant. Feel free to call on me at any time. Um, we are also looking for a uh, Captain David Griff. Uh, but of course, you don't know him either. I'm afraid not, Lieutenant. Thank you. Senor Gatti, Lita and Americano are gone. Get Eduardo. Look at them buzzers out there just waiting for the skipper to show up. Hey, yep. If he shows up. If he shows up, they'll hang him for sure, Mr. Snow. This is a civilized country, Bolly. He'll be allowed to prove he's innocent. Look, he's a foreign sailor in a foreign port. He hasn't got a chance. I tell you, they'll hang him for sure. <laughs> As soon as the coast is clear, see if you can get the skipper aboard, will you? I'm going to take a long shot. Holy, wait. Don't get excited now, mate. I'm just stretching my legs a little bit. Ah! Where have you been? What happened to you? Later, Ellie, you get the lady below. Wait, what are you going to do? I'm going to the police. But they want you for murder. I know, and I know who did it. They won't listen to you. They won't believe you. The lady has a point there. Bolly and I had a long talk with Gonzalo, the detective. They got quite a case against you. I know, Ellie, you know. Hiya, Captain. Glad to see you made it aboard. Hi there, Bolly. Do you always come aboard like that? Well, it's the only way I can lead off the police. Say, hadn't we better be shoving off from here? They make it a brainstorm and double back. I'm handing myself over. What? David. Why don't you listen to reason? At least leave Havana for a few days. Then when it's safe and, and when you're sure that Carlos won't get to you first, then you can go to the police. It's no use, Lita. Captain. It makes sense to me. I mean, why take a chance when you don't have to? Because that's the way it's going to be. I don't want any more arguments. Take the lady below. What the devil, lady? I had to do it. He was putting his neck right into a noose. I don't know about that. Now look, the lady's right. Look, we got to get the skipper below and hide him. You take over the ship and I'll get him below. Well, all I know is that all hands are in for rough sailing when the skipper comes to. Please, there's no time. Let's get... It's getting to be a habit. I'm sorry. I had to do it. For your own good. Now don't say it because it isn't true. What? That it hurt you more than it did me. Fair at sea. Yes. But don't blame your crew. I persuaded them to do it. It's all wrong, Lita. For a woman to do what she can. For the man she cares for. But don't you see it all? Only give him worse trouble with the police. I don't think that would be very wise, Captain. How did you get aboard? We intercepted your ship outside the harbor, gave a signal of distress, and the Lita persuaded your good heart to Mr. Snow to pick us up. Us? Tomas Eduardo with me. 
They are on deck making certain your crew behaves. The thing I swallowed that bilge about you wanting to get away from Carlos. I wasn't lying, Captain. Only the man I care for happens to be Carlos. When he couldn't persuade you to take us to Florida his way, I tried mine. It worked. You're not there yet. We are on the way. You're forgetting one thing, Gaddy. If I refuse to navigate this ship, you'll never get there. I've discovered your first mate, Mr. Snow, is a competent navigator and very devoted to you. In exchange for my word of honor, he has agreed to deliver us to our destination. So all is arranged. Don't try it, Captain. Let us just sit here quietly and talk like friends. It is so warm in here. You haven't done much sailing, have you, Gaddy? Why do you ask? The motion of the ship seems to be bothering you. It's just close in here. You'd be better off up on deck in the fresh air. But I warn you, if you try and pass me, I'll have that gun off you. And be shot. If I'm dead, you'd have to sail the ship yourself. Mr. Snow wouldn't do it for you. Still, if you're feeling queasy, the fresh air would be the best thing. Carlos, you do look pale. I'm all right. What are you doing with that lamp? Oh, nothing. Just leave it alone. You know what I could do with something to eat? A couple of nice pork chops and some thick, greasy gravy. Stop talking about food. Have you ever heard of couscous? It's an old Arabian dish made with a whole sheep. The honored guest gets to eat the eyeballs. Carlos, why don't you go up and they can get some fresh air? Give me the gun. I'm all right. Sure, you're all right. The rolling, pitching motion of the boat and the smell of the bilges doesn't bother you. Why, I bet you could even look at that lamp and it wouldn't worry you at all. Get back. If something's happened to the skipper, I'll... Get back before something happens to you. Get down and see what happens. Nice work, Foley. Oh, it's nothing, Captain. Jackie, look after him. He's got a nasty wound in the shoulder. Should have blown a fellow's head off, Skipper. Everything all right below, David? All depends on your point of view. I thought you'd be below looking after Carlos. You're pretty good at it, as I can testify. Listen to me. I'll make a deal with you. You never give up, do you? We've got a fortune on board in diamonds. Half of them are yours if you'll take us to the coast of Florida. I'm sorry. You'll be rich. I said no. Will nothing change your mind? Nothing that you can offer, senorita. Go below and look after your man. Police put off the starboard side, Captain. If you want to get rough, that's enough of this. Please, hey, please take it easy, fella. Put out of this, sailor. This is none of your business. Oh, no, you don't. I said take it easy. I told you once, sailor, this is none of your business. Look out, he's got a 